Frosty fam, it's me, Karen Frost, here at Now Decadence. Welcome to my channel, welcome one and all. Welcome to my, you know, subscribers that are already subscribed. Welcome to my new subscribers. I'm getting new subscribers every day, which, which is really awesome. Thank you very much. And if you've not subscribed already, what were you waiting for? It's, it's free, you know, and I've got more videos coming, you know. I'm, I'm doing Mondays and Thursdays I've stuck to that schedule and even thrown in an extra video here and there so subscribe turn on your notification bell join the frosty fam because we're awesome my frosty fam are awesome they are so supportive and lovely love you guys just just saying love you all anyway so i'm just showing you what i'm going to be using to do this set that you can see i love my cat's eye gel polishes i will say that they are awesome the effect oh i always end up doing the velvet effect because that's just my favorite but you can obviously do different effects with the magnet whatever effect you fancy doing with that magnet oh they're so versatile but yeah i do tend to just end up doing the velvet look I'm a bit boring like that but it looks so pretty the way it just reflects and shines oh stunning anyway so what I'm going to be doing is a quick infill first I've removed my previous gel polish and prepared my nails and uh, removed the shine from the regrowth area you know all of that jazz um, I used a dehydrator of course and I also used a non-acid primer this time. Sometimes I do prime, sometimes I don't. You don't necessarily have to prime with gel. On this occasion I actually did but I didn't show it on camera. So what I'm doing first of all after I've you know prepped the nails and primed and all of that jazz, I'm placing the base layer of the rubber base coat first of all. you know. I like to have that to protect my nails. It's like having your thin clear base when you're doing acrylic, same principle. So, and the rubber base coat is really thick. So it gives it quite a nice barrier there to protect your nail when you're filing off. And then I will be applying the poly gel to my regrowth area and then blending it down the nail wherever I thinned it out a little bit too much or whatever um, when removing the previous design which was gel polish uh, so yeah I will just fill in that back area where I've got my regrowth make sure my apex is in the right place because as nails grow out so does your apex so you do have to rebalance a nail if you're doing an infill so that's why I'm applying not just on that back area where the regrowth is I'm applying down the nail to make sure I'm moving my apex and making the rest of the nails as strong as they should be because when I removed the gel polish the nails did get a bit thinner so I just want to build them up a little bit as I go along make sure they stay strong and don't break whenever you're going to do a gel polish design please remember that your nails need to be just that little bit thinner gel polish is a very thick product and when you've added two layers of color and then your top coat over the top of that those three layers do add up as it were and when you're doing different designs you can end up with three or four layers of color plus your top coat so when you think about that it's very easy for you to then lose the shape of your nails and for your nails to then look bulky therefore if you are applying your base product and in this case it's the poly gel um, if you apply if you're aware of it and you, you keep that in mind apply that poly gel just that little bit thinner then your nails won't get bulked out by the gel polish polish it's a it's a balancing act and it's something that you you learn over time and 
a lot of people could, you know, when they use gel polish, like, I've lost my shape totally. What, why have I lost my shape? And that's the reason why. Um, gel polish is thick, so it's very easy to lose your shape that way. Oh, look at that. What a mess. My hands were really warm and so was my room, so the uh, poly gel was slipping <clears throat> onto my skin. So I quickly washed that off with a bit of the slip solution and wiped my hands with the kitchen roll. And it, the most... Uh, convenient time I will actually go and wash my hands and get that product off my skin these products sorry about my head getting in the way there um, these products are not made for the skin nail products are not made for skin they are chemical irritants so if you get them on the skin a lot and often you can indeed develop a allergy a reaction a contact dermatitis which is you know a, a, it is an allergic reaction to the products and that would make it almost impossible to then carry on using nail products and nobody wants that you don't want to have to be having swollen peeling red fingers because you've used nail products and you've uh, you know you've become allergic to them so nobody wants that so that's why uh, we try very hard not to get products on the skin it does happen on occasion so, you know accidents happen what have you not much you can do about that apart from get it off the skin as quickly as possible and at the most convenient time that's you know soon wash your hands with soap and water and get that product off as quickly as you can it's really not good to get it on your skin so anyway whilst i've been rambling on as you can see i've just pushing and pressing and pulling and stroking the product where i want it to go so filling filling in that regrowth area first of all get that nice and neat around that cuticle area make sure it's not too thick there because obviously you don't want it thick by the cuticle area because that would make a step and you don't want that so with the wonder of poly gel you can actually be quite accurate with your placement of the product so you can make sure that your cuticle area is pretty flush just with your brush and um, which would mean less filing later on the problem I, d I don't normally do all nails in one go and as you've seen I end up messing the other nails up as I go along because I'm klutzy and that's why I don't normally do all nails in one go but for some reason this day I was feeling confident that I wouldn't muck it up and uh, yeah as you saw I had to go back to the ring finger to sort it out because I'd stuck my other nail in it and, and yeah had to fix that area but it is possible as you can see to do all nails in one go but if you're klutzy like me I highly recommend just doing one nail at a time and flash curing then you won't have to keep going back to other nails that you've uh, messed up <laughs> as you've gone along <laughs> anyway so yeah just pat and press that product stroke it when I dip into the slip solution I am swiping my brush on the side of the dish to remove the excess product I'm also tapping onto my kitchen towel before placing my brush on the product on the nail because I don't want to oversaturate it. Oversaturating poly gel can cause problems with adhesion because it does affect the composition of the product itself but also oversaturating it can make it very thin. Um, well, not really thin. It's hard, really hard to describe the texture of it. If you oversaturate poly gel it just it will slide more it's more it becomes more soft and more likely to slide if that makes sense and you just you, you don't want that so do not oversaturate always tap the excess slip solution whether you're using rubbing alcohol or a specific slip solution for the system you're using um, definitely swipe up the side of your dish first then tap it on your kitchen roll second then third you can use your brush and press and pat the product where you need it to go and as you can see because the 
poly gel does not set up until you put it in the lamp you have got more than enough time in the world to get that product to lay nice and neat and smooth with your brush before you cure it so do do take that for me it makes sense to take that extra time to pat and press you see i'm taking my time on that now and i'm really smoothing it out that way i've got less filing at the end that's my my goal in taking the extra time with my application so on this thumbnail tapping around that cuticle area pushing the product up to towards the epinichium but I'm not touching it you know you don't want your product to touch the side walls or your epinichium which is you know your proximal nail fold you don't want it touching the skin that will cause lifting so do make sure there is a millimeter between the skin and the product so that you are not touching the skin it's easier to do it with the poly gel because like I said it doesn't set up until you put it in the lamp so you can be really precise with your application making sure it's not touching the skin and make sure it's nice and smooth and laid really nicely so that you've got less filing in the end because who wants filing no one but you know if you smooth it out loads and loads take that time then you've got less time filing so if you look at the other nails you can see they're not they're a bit lumpy bumpy but they're not that bad so there's not that much filing for me to do which is awesome because I don't like filing I like watching it but I don't like doing it so yeah just gently pat and press I mean the poly gel is soft so you don't have to press really hard on it um, so just take your time be gentle with it get it where you want it to go smooth the area out and then when you've come to filing you've got less to do so I filed and shaped off camera because you guys have seen loads of that already uh, if my frosty filing freaks want to see some filing check out some of my other videos I do have a, quite a lot of videos where I've included the filing so yeah go and check that out anyway so I've removed all the dust of course and now I'm applying the gel polish I love this color it's like a it's a nude but it's it's got like a mauvey hint to it oh i love this color i do like my neutral colors but this one is just it's lush i like this color it's a bit i suppose some people think nudes is boring but this color for me is just gorgeous i really like that so i will place a thin layer on the particular nails that i'm going to be putting that gel polish on and if I have managed to get any on the skin because I've got shaky fingers I will use a small brush with some rubbing alcohol and make sure I remove it from the skin before I cure it try not to get it on the skin like I said before these products are not made for skin they are chemical irritants so do try your best not to get it on the skin but like I said if you do get it on the skin remove it as quickly as possible which is you know at this point using a brush and some rubbing alcohol get that off the skin then we can cure it in place and then when the nails are all finished then you can go and wash your hands and all of that jazz but yeah whilst you're applying the, the best thing to do is just use some rubbing alcohol and get it off the skin before you cure it so now I will apply my second coat of this polish and as you can see it is opaque on that second layer try to keep the layers thin um, you don't want to bulk the nails out like I said gel polish is intrinsically thick anyway so to make sure that the product cures correctly do make sure that you are keeping the layers thin and I do recommend using a lamp that is made for the products you're using I have the SPD London lamp which I use to cure my SPD London products because it's the wavelength of it is made for these products gels cure on different wavelengths and the manufacturers will be able to tell you what late wavelength cures their product thoroughly um, and you can ask manufacturers what wavelength their products cure at and therefore buy a lamp if they haven't manufactured a lamp themselves um, you can then find a lamp that is the wavelength for the gels that you're using this um, helps with the allergy issue as well because nail dust 
on the skin does cause problems for some people as well and if the lamp hasn't cured the product all the way through even though it looks like it's cured if it's not the same wavelength that the manufacturers recommend then it might possibly not be cured all the way through and therefore the nail dust can then cause issues with allergies i know it's really sciencey and boring for a lot of people but these things are important for nail techs to know i highly recommend if you are a nail tech to read some books um take some classes in the science and the chemical composition marion newman has some good books doug shoon has some good books and they're they're available on amazon about you know the science and chemicals of nail products and it just brings your awareness to a level that I reckon every nail tech should have I mean you're using these chemicals on a daily basis you should really know the safe way to use them and uh, what happens if you're they're not used correctly kind of thing so the allergies have risen so much in recent years the people people developing allergies against you know nail products it has risen in recent years and that's because of lack of education unfortunately but yeah try and educate yourself that's all i'm saying anyway so i've applied the first layer of the cat's eye on my little finger and i'm having a play because i'm trying to decide what to do I'm like do i want a different kind of cat's eye or do i want the velvet effect and i'm kind of just playing around with the effects and seeing how i like it and it's wicked because it's like an etch -a sketch as long as you haven't cured it you can just use the brush to swipe it over and start again oh i'm showing my age now etch -a sketch anyone else remember etch -a sketches when you just used to shake it <laughs> and then you could draw again oh i had one of those when i was little anyway yeah showing my age there who cares i'm old i don't care it is what it is so i decided to go with the velvet effect as you saw in the beginning <laughs> I'm so boring. I could have done so many different effects with that magnet, but yeah, I went with the velvet effect. So I just flash cured that finger for like 10 seconds just to hold the molecules in place because if you don't cure it straight away, the mo molecules will start settling again and then you'll lose the cat's eye effect. So just, just flash cure each layer just to hold those molecules right where you need them to be, where you want them to be in the design that you've chosen with your magnet yeah flash cure it and then you can move on to the next nail so same again on this nail I'm going to end up playing around with it and thinking shall I do a different design with the magnet and then go with the velvet look anyway because <laughs> I'm a muppet <laughs> so I've managed to get a little bit on the skin so uh, clean up brush with some rubbing alcohol get that off the skin quick 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 smart that also helps you keep the cuticle area nice and neat as well if you've got shaky hands like me using a, a brush with some rubbing alcohol really does help you get that cuticle area nice and neat so as you can see I'm messing around with that magnet just trying to decide what effect I'm like do I like it do I like it okay yeah I like it put it in the lamp flash cure it for 10 seconds move on to the next finger same again with that cat's eye polish which is stunning and i keep finding bits of fluff oh, it's so annoying anyone else get really annoyed when they get a bit of fluff in their polish it drives me crazy because it makes it bumpy and it's really annoying you're like no get off where, where did you even come from where did the fluff come from so frustrating <laughs> look like where, where did you come from how what where when <laughs> i've got no fluff flying around i don't understand it but yeah fluff always seems to appear out of nowhere when you are doing gel polish which yeah all you can do is dig it out like that there we go get it out and then run your brush over the nails to smooth it all back out again same again on this finger just taking that clean up brush with some rubbing alcohol making sure it's not on the skin and then have a play with the magnet get the effect i'm after isn't that look at that isn't that awesome oh that is such a cool effect i love i love the cat size you can see those molecules just moving with that magnet i was like oh stunning 
Like, do I like that? Yeah, I like that. So put that in the lamp. And now that I've done all the fingers, I will cure for 60 seconds. Make sure that layer is nice and fully cured. And then I will add a second layer. You don't necessarily need to add the second layer. I like it because it really gives the cat's eye depth. Um, that's why I'm putting a second coat on, but you don't actually have to. You can also put these over a black base if you want. I didn't need to. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I didn't need the black base, I quite liked it without the black base on this design. So yeah, you can put these over any color, really, to be honest. And whatever color you have underneath, sometimes, depending on whether it's a dark color or not, um, it can influence the shade the cat's eye comes out as. So yeah, because these, the base color that I've got underneath from the poly gel color that I used it didn't really affect the color of this uh, cat's eye polish so you don't really notice it but if I was to use like a darker color underneath it it would then make the cat's eye look darker if you know what I mean so I'm having a play with the magnet like mm, do, what do I want to do do I want to do, do that do I want to do this having a play with different designs and then do my etch a sketch move <laughs> with the brush just brush over to start again and clean up any mess that I make because I always end up making a mess can't help it shake your hands what can I do not a lot apart from clean up and then I go back to doing the velvet effect <laughs> flash cure that in place so it's the same thing over and over again so I will let you watch that in peace and then I will be back in a bit when I'm doing the design of the sort of leopard cheetah print style thing yeah well I don't know if it's leopard or cheetah but it's, it's an animal print design anyway I'll let you watch in peace and then I'll be back Again. Maybe it will come a sunny day. 
Okay, so now that I have finished layering those gel polishes and fully curing them, now I will go to do go on to do the design portion. So I'm using my SBD London seven mm detailer brush, and it's really fine and really good. And all I'm doing is little semicircles and dots for my leopard cheetah print style um yeah i just fill the nail with this it's literally just little lines semicircles dots squiggly bits kind of thing it's an easy design to do because you guys know i can't draw so i'm not going to draw something complicated because i just i just can't do it uh but this kind of design i can do because it's there's no wrong or right way of doing it, you know. You make it up as you go along. You just semicircles, squiggles, and dots kind of thing. That's it. That's the basic leopard cheetah style print that you see. It's not exactly like the actual animals <laughs> because I'm I didn't look at any reference pictures or anything. I just went with the off the top of my head kind of thing and like I said this is not a it's not it's not a difficult or complicated design so yeah definitely beginner friendly with the old leopard print and because I'm using the cat's eye to do it it's such a cool effect because I activate those molecules with the magnet and then it gives the cheetah print this dimension when you move the nail it's really cool so highly recommend if you try out some animal print with the cat's eye gel polishes and then activating with the magnet it's such a beautiful effect so it makes it makes a change from just using you know black to do leopard print kind of thing use the try it and if you do try it tag me on instagram i'd love to see because using cat's eye to do leopard print is just that little bit different and i don't think i've seen anyone else do it but it's such a cool effect it's look i mean look at it it just looks awesome and when it hits the light in certain ways when you move your finger it's just beautiful i can't get enough of cat's eye gel polishes just i just can't and louise at spd london she's brought out some more different cat's eye gel polishes i've been so tempted to get them but I've pretty much got the first full collection of the 5D cat size and I've got the silver one as well so I'm like do you really need any more cat size answer is no do I want them answer is yes <laughs> do I want the new ones absolutely of course I do but yeah I'm, I'm having to sh have some self-restraint and not try and purchase anymore because yeah don't really have the money for it um, and I don't really need it necessarily. It's more of a, a want. But yeah, I'll just fill up this nail with this cat's eye because it's gorgeous and it just, I think, sets off the nails perfectly instead of using black for the leopard print. I love it. Let me know what you guys think of, you know, using the cat's eye for leopard print. Do you like it? What do you think? I really love it. I was really pleased with this set. I'm not going to lie. I liked it. My, my leopard print skills aren't the best, you know. Like I said, it doesn't really look like an actual animal's leopard print. But it's still, you can still tell it's leopard print, you know. But anyway, yeah. Let me know what you guys think because I thought it looked really pretty. I really enjoyed wearing this set. So, yeah. I'd love to definitely hear what you guys think about this using the cat's eye this way it's just so cool right so cure that for 60 seconds now that i've finished on both fingers where i'm doing the design and now it's time to bling it baby oh yes getting the crystals out why not and i'm using these um they're kind of gold but brown crystals I just thought it set this set off really nicely um, yeah they're kind of 
it's not really gold it's more of a yellowy brown kind of color anyway so i'm using the spd london diamond uh, gel pen for these crystals because it's good stuff it holds crystals on perfectly i very rarely lose a crystal when i use the spd london diamond gel so and i'm using the spd london uh, crystal picker up a tool as well so yeah just doing a straight line down this nail and then i will put some smaller crystals around certain of the other crystals so but first i'll get this lot lined up nice and straight down the center of the nail from cuticle to free edge because i felt like having a nice lot of bling on this set why not why not it's yeah i'm loving the bling and that big one keeps sliding can you see that big one keeps sliding that's the problem when you're using bigger gems they it, they can slide if that is an issue for you then i'd suggest using probably a thicker um diamond gel pen um not that uh use the what's it called the tony lee jewelry gel that's much thicker in consistency so the gems are less likely to slide but what I did was I just got them exactly where I wanted them with using the um, tool side of the crystal picker upper thing got them all in line and then quickly flash cured it so that they didn't slide away and then I can use some more of the diamond gel to apply some smaller crystals around some of the other ones like I said just to bling it up good and proper so I'm just going to keep adding crystals where I think I want them. Again, I didn't plan this crystal placement, so I'm um, pulling that crystal off because I wasn't happy with it. Um, yeah, I made this placement up as I went along, so it wasn't exactly a plan. It was just get the crystals out and start sticking them on and see what I end up with kind of thing. So I'll flash cure those in place because I don't want those to move. And then... I'll add some more so I just yeah I'll keep adding until I'm satisfied with the placement and whether I've got enough crystals or not adding this is this is where the diamond gel pen is just perfect because it's got that little nib you can be so accurate with your placement of the gel the diamond gel um, you're not getting it all over the rest of the nail or on top of the crystals because you can be so accurate in exactly where you put it so you can just bung your crystal on top of it and bob your uncle perfect kind of thing so flash cure that in place and now it's time to top it off and keep it tough yay so we are at the end of the video so i'd like to take the time to say thank you ever so much for coming to my channel and spending some of your most precious time with me watching this video i appreciate you thank you ever so much if you have not already subscribed please go ahead and click that subscribe button join my lovely frosty fam they are awesome and i love them to pieces and they are the best ever so yeah we'd love to have you so please join and if you have enjoyed this video or it's helped you in any way shape or form please please click that like button it would really help out my little channel and it also indicates to me that you are enjoying the content that i am bringing out to you and if you are up to it if you feel like it you are most welcome to leave me a comment i am more than happy to talk to you so that's all i have for this time peeps you take care now and i'll speak to you all again soon bye for now
here all this time I won't never ever make the same mistake again I'll be waiting for you so just tell me where and when Ooh. Baby I'ma hold you tight Give me just another night Baby on the morning light Like we used to do when you were mine Baby I'ma hold you close This is how the story goes Why it's gotta be so hard when it feels right Make it, yeah. All hard work's gonna be.